Connected up. Here we go. Malcolm's connecting. Sherry, are you there? We'll see who else comes in. Malcolm, I see you. Sherry, you can unmute and uh, hit your video if you want. <laughs> Not sure of the disaster behind me, but let's say sure. I'm going through all my stuff. So excuse my language, but shit is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. And all of a sudden, you know, you you start up your computer and it's doing some kind of update. I'm like, what? Why? I didn't tell you to do an update. What's going on? Let me at least shut the closet door. <laughs> I, I thought I thought that we only had those issues on PCs. No, no, no. I, Somehow it just decided to do an update. I'm like, I thought I turned off all those auto updates, but it was some security update. Like, okay, what let me in? But it's all good now. Well, how's, how uh, how are you doing, Cherry? Malcolm, you guys doing well? Yeah, busy, busy, but doing okay. How about yourself? Freezing good. up there? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is the, my favorite weather, the sleet cold freezing rain you know not quite don't forget the wind no <laughs> and the wind a little uh crazy getting outside trying to get some holiday decorations up in the rain and the ice and <laughs> yeah fun yeah, fun yeah. fun i don't think we're gonna see sun for like three weeks here oh my gosh. i keep looking at the weather it's like no sun no sun no sun no sun oh my gosh oh, that's man. depressing man yeah yeah it, can it, you uh, send some of the moisture down here sure Sure. Well, they had some good rain. I heard from Rick, and he said they got rained out. I think one day. Yeah. His. Yeah, Rick. it came through really hard. It blew really hard on one day, and then the storm came through, and figured that uh, we'd end up with some clouds the next day. I think that was Sunday that it rained really harder. Yeah, and then figured they'd have some clouds and be a lousy morning, but just kind of blew through real quick. Wow. Yeah, yeah you guys can use it. I have been texted in the group. Let me let Chuck know because he was logging in early. And then uh, I can share my desktop. So let's start. Does any... You guys have any questions? I know, Sherry, you've been posting some beautiful photos. Things look Thank great. You. Still going through my cards, believe it or not. Yeah, no. So shots out there. I believe it. I, I just went through, I'm on my last card now. I just popped it in like 10 minutes ago. And uh, I got another javelin. I got another coyote. I got the eagle. I just posted that. Malcolm, I was thinking of you because remember that tree that was in the middle of the lake thing all the way over to the right? I was like, oh, that's a great post. And then uh, I was back there later in the afternoon on Friday and there was, lo and behold, the eagle sitting there. I was on the other side and flew right at me. That's awesome. I'm lucky. Cool. Got a kestrel. You know me and my rafters. Yeah, I love the kestrels. They're they're tough, tough little bird. Scott said that's his uh, nemesis bird. He never seems to be in the right place at the right time to get a good photo of it. Yeah, and I actually got a kingfisher too. So that's what I was just gonna. Oh wow! I know. I, I got really lucky. Quite a diversity. Bird. Yeah. All you're missing was the bobcat. Exactly. Exactly. And where I live in Florida, somebody got a photo of a bobcat right where we live yesterday. No. Wow. So that's great. It's on a list. <laughs> yep. Right. It's patience. It's just about being there, getting out and being there. Well, uh, Chuck's there, let him in and then, and then I'll, I'll, uh, post this recording in YouTube and then I'll put the link on the Facebook group for anybody else that, that couldn't make it. Cool. Give Chuck a second to connect up in here. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I haven't gone through everything because I've been busy with um, gigs, paying events and, you know, things like that. So we did our last big event of the year. 
Uh, so getting those all called and done. And so, yeah, you get just a bit of memory, right? A bunch of cards. But one of the <laughs> things that um, I like to do, which I've learned from my days as a photojournalist, is we try and maximize speed to get things in and to get things out. That's the way it was back then. And and uh, one of the devices that I use quite often, I'll have to replug it back in here, and is a hub. So this is the older uh, Lexar workflow hub, and you could get all different types of card readers to go into the slots. So wow. that way I can download, uh, I have two of these, so I could download eight cards at a time simultaneously, wow. right? So instead of doing them one, oh, I dropped my cable one second. Come on, where's the cable? There. All right, get this plug back in. All right, so that, that hub allows you to put in multiple media and to download. Um, one of the things that I use for my initial ingest is a program called Photo Mechanic. Okay. And the reason I would use that over Lightroom, again, is, is speed and efficiency. And it will download cards simultaneously. Where Lightroom and most other things download cards one at a time, then goes to the next one, right? So it takes takes a little bit longer. So let me share my screen. And again, if you guys have any questions at any time. Yeah, what, what was the name of that again? I didn't catch sure, it. Sure, I'm, I'm going to pull it up. So Photo Mechanic um, is basically a browser program. It'll browse anything, anywhere on your drives, and it's, and it's fast. So this is Photo Mechanic Plus. And I, I'll put a, a link in the description after this. And with okay. it, you could launch and, and open up anything, right? So I went out the other day just photographing some small birds in our area, some warblers and things. And it'll browse really quickly anywhere, either locally, your network, any storage devices, any form of media. So pulls them all up. So there's a thousand photos in here. And what's really nice is even though these are raw, mm -hmm. it's fast, right? Because it's just taking the JPEG preview of the image and it's not trying to build a smart preview or anything behind it so that you can edit the photo. So it, it was designed, you know, in terms of journalism, but a lot of people are using it. More and more people are using it. It has multiple benefits. So you could take like, this is a raw file. And let's say, for example, I'm out somewhere and I wanted to share a photo really quickly. And I like the way I captured it. Well, we have tools that we can use and you could extract a JPEG preview. You don't have to um, manipulate the raw file. And the cameras today have, you know, four or five megabyte JPEG preview. So you can quickly move photos, email them, FTP, and post them to a website. So this is all about speed and efficiency, this program, right? So there's lots of cool things that can be done with it. It'll also catalog, meaning if you have, um, I have a bunch of drives that are offline. And if I want to know what my wildlife stuff was from 2015, you can use Photo Mechanic Plus to create kind of like Lightroom, a reference catalog that's much smaller than Lightroom's. And mm -hmm. you could search it. It's a database. So you could say, I'm looking for a snow monkey, right? And you type that in and it's searchable. It'll pull up that catalog and it'll tell you what drive those images are on, whether it's connected or not. So it's very handy that way. So it helps for having your database. 
the uh, other big thing is who, what, when, where, and why. All, all this information, because again, it's searchable. And also, this content here in the description caption field is really the most important because every program can read this box, right? Uh, for example, we had a photographer that we were working with. She took family photos of her kids playing in the snow on a sled and she posted them to her Instagram page. And then a couple months later, she goes to her local UPS store and there is a cling ad, the whole front window of her kids on mm -hmm. a sled, some UPS ad, right? So she's like, what do I do? I'm like, well, you call them up, cease and desist, and they got to pay you immediately, find out where it's being used. And there's um, fees for those kind of things, minimum 10 grand she should get. So right, long way I'm going about this is because she had all this information embedded in all of her files. There was no denying, like she didn't have the burden of proof saying that is my photo because their web designer just took photos off of her Instagram without her permission. Now, they would have got away with it had she not seen it in her own neighborhood. But because she did that, it was much easier to prove it. And UPS settled with her for a fee, no questions asked, right? It didn't even have to go to court or anything because they knew they were in the wrong. It's marked copyright. It's marked everywhere. Her contact information, all that. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to put in just, I'm going to drop these five cards in, even though they are um, unrelated to wildlife, it doesn't matter. But I'll show you how it works and how quickly it is. So the, okay, this uh, is what I'm really interested in. Sure. On the ingest, as far as what you actually put in on the ingest information and what the different shortcuts. I mean, sure. when I pulled that up, it was like five pages of. Right. You um, could put as much you know, information or as little. That's why I said at the very beginning, at minimum, fill out the caption field because okay. not every browsing software reads all of those fields, but everything reads the caption, that first okay. map. So always put basically who, what, when, where, and why, put okay. your copyright and how to contact you, you know, just as a good practice. And the reason I do it on ingest versus on the back end, let's say I picked my five favorites and then export them is usually I'll forget. Right. And I've just made it part of a habit. So what we do is we're saving our work from being what they call orphaned, right? So again, like we go back to this girl, if her photo had no information and she just quickly posted it and it was orphaned, then the burden of proof would be on her, right? That that is my image. Then we got to go through many more hoops to do it. Now with technology, you could do image search parameters so you could find your images out in the wild wild west if you think someone's using them for profit without your knowledge so as you can see the minute you plug it in you can browse any connected drive or um, memory cards right they'll all pop up here and so you could pick multiple destinations so you can immediately do a secondary location if you want on ingest so you're backing up as you're pulling them in if you choose to you know but i have my primary raid drive is backed up every night both to an external service which is backblaze you get unlimited storage for about 2.99 a month i'm sorry 2.99 a year so i've wow. i've I go back to probably 2007. We've got terabytes of data on Backblaze and it keeps it as long as you pay the fee, you know? So it's really great for backing up. And what is it, Backblaze? Back, B-A-C-K, Blaze, B-L-A-Z-E. 
And there's other things like Carbonite and other services, right. but Backblaze has just been the one that's worked and very simple to work. Uh, what I like about Backblaze is you can pick just one file. Let's say you're out somewhere and you want to access, access something that you've backed up. You could pull it down on your phone, one file. Or let's say you had something catastrophic. I recently had this happen that one of my 24 terabyte RAID drives connected to my desktop uh, got corrupted, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes when your computer goes asleep, if it doesn't properly eject it, it causes these errors and it, so it won't mount. So I don't panic, right? I could have backed it up, you know, reset the file structure here, but then I would have to put in all my data. But because Backblaze does an identical copy of your file structure, I just ordered the hard drives to be sent to me from Backblaze. So they sent me four six terabyte hard drives, all in order. I reformatted my drive and I used the hard drives to back them up on site because it's faster than trying to move that kind of data, downloading it back to your computer. It can be done, but it's just time consuming. So I was back up and running within a day. They FedEx the drives to you. You have the option of either keeping the drives, but if you return the drives within 30 days, you're not charged anything. So um, I'm a firm believer in it. And then I also have a, a network area, area storage device locally that's separate from our direct connected RAID that's on our network. So we have our RAID, a NAS, and then the cloud. So we're backed up. So here's where I like, this is the metadata. And Malcolm, mm -hmm. maybe this is what you were talking about is all these different fields. And it's really great and they're sticky as well. And what I mean by that is you can create a drop down, and we could say, okay, I'm going to add this Bosque caption and I could save it. Or if I want to go down here where we have uh, oftentimes different photographers working with us on different events. So I have all of our photographers' names in here, right? Mm -hmm. I put that in there, their associate photographers. So anything you want to use rapidly and often, you could put in these fields and save it. So it could be anything you want. So this is the description caption, and this is basically where I put everything, the who, what, when, where, why, how to get a hold of us, yeah. right? Also mark it as copyrighted. So to type the uh, copyright sign, at least on a Mac, it's Alt-G, Alt or Option, letter G is in good. And that gets you the copyright sign. On, on a PC, it should just be Alt, A-L-T, and the letter G is in good. On a Mac, it's Option G, and that gets your copyright logo, right? So that lets anybody who's browsing your work know at least you have knowledge and this is your work. You know, they can't take advantage of you. So basically I put in here the date I took the photographs, where it was, what I was photographing, my contact information, email, um, and some of our, our web links. Mm -hmm. Now, this gets applied to every image on all four of these cards. So you don't have to go any further than this box if you don't want to, or you could put different things in here. So wildlife, coyote, high desert, sunrise, sunset, clouds, colorful sky, anything that would trigger you in mm -hmm. terms of like, oh, I know I had a great sunset. There were some spectacular clouds. I don't remember when I shot those. This is now all searchable. So on any computer, if you pull up your search field, you know, you can now search anything with that because all this information becomes part of a database, right? And all computers will search all your connected drives for that information. So in event location, just put in, again, in all these things, you could save them if you know you're going to be doing something over and over. So we can add that. Or we could say, okay, 2022-12, today's date, 1-4. For whatever reason, I could put Canada. Hmm. 
right? And then I could save that. So then if I come back here and say, oh, I'm going back to Bosque, I could put Bosque back in there, right? So it just saves time on things. Um, and a lot of cameras too, if you use like for Canon, it's EOS utility, Sherry with uh, Olympus, it's probably the OM software. Mm -hmm. You yes. could connect your camera and you could put this basic caption, just basically your name, how to contact you and copyright. So as you're taking pictures, it's embedding that as well into the file. Should you forget to do this, right? So again, okay. you're preventing your work from being orphaned, you know, someone else taking it and using it for whatever purpose. You know, this is searchable. So then I'm happy with all these fields that I've filled in. And again, fill in as many or as little as you want. Just basically get this box, the first one, because everything reads that. Only things like Lightroom, um, Photoshop, really heavy editing programs are going to read the rest of these fields. But even Facebook and browsers and uh, anything reads this first box. Cool. So we I'm can sorry. save this whole template down here. So you can see down here, I could clear this, right? Clear everything I want. And I could load. I have different ones that I've saved. We have for social media. Okay. And I could load that. And there's our social media uh, caption, right? So you could save these as templates. And it's a much cleaner, easier interface than trying to do this in Lightroom or anything else. The tabs are bigger. The fields are bigger. The stickiness of what you can save is more useful. Right. So we can say, okay, close the template and we're going to start ingesting. So with that, it's reading. I'll pull up the ingest window. It's reading these cards simultaneously, all four cards. And it's telling you where they're coming in, where they're going. Right. And I could pull open. Uh, open contact sheet. Oh, where did I send it? I forgot where I was sending it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let me go back and see where I was sending it. I'm sending it. Oh, I'm sending it to small birds. So I'm sending it to this contact sheet. So here's another nice thing is you have the option of how you would like to see your photographs. Sort by capture time, mm -hmm. modification, file name, and you could set these as defaults. I've set capture time as my default because usually I sync up my cameras and the clocks in them. So we could go down. And here's the event that I photographed Saturday night, right? All the files are coming in. And so I could actually start culling and tagging right now as we go through these. Um, and if we click on a photo, you pull up the info, and here is the information that we had in the caption field. It's embedded on every file. All right. And then you could start rolling, um, going through the images. We could take them large. It gives you full metadata information, which I like, you know, serial number, all this information on the side over here. So it's really nice for seeing how the photographs were created, all of that information. And then what's nice is you could zoom in, check for sharpness. There's all kinds of utilities on it. It's also giving you a live uh, ingest status right mm -hmm. here. And now we could start going through these photos really quickly and we could tag them too, right? So I have my preferences for photo mechanic set up to match Lightroom. So everything in here now is matching the exact colors, stars the, to uh, agree with Lightroom. It'll set it up for Lightroom and it'll set it up for Bridge. 
you know, there's tutorials on photo mechanics, um, YouTube page, and they're very simple, very easy to follow. So you could match all these tagging tools to your image editing software. Okay. So I'm just going to stop this really quick, just in terms of uh, expediting it. Let me get this back over here. No yawning allowed. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'm a- It's all good. <laughs> so you can see one card's already done, right? But you can see how they're all coming in simultaneously. That's a huge advantage. So we could stop them as they're coming in. And I'm going to stop the ingest just so we don't need to sit here and go through all these. All right, so what my workflow is, is I'm gonna close this tab and I'll show you um, a file structure. And Malcolm and I were talking about this. So again, it doesn't matter what I'm photographing. So this is a um, RAID, a 24 terabyte RAID hard drive. So if we go in here to Bosky, right? In here, I'll separate all my folders. So raw images, video files, what it's gonna end up looking like is this. So we're gonna have everything to do with it. So let's say this was the wildlife. So all raw images, raw images call, edits for, whatever you want it to be, posting mm -hmm. to Facebook, whatever the case may be, sneak peeks, Lightroom. So that's what I would do. So if I open up the call, I'll show you this. And again, I haven't gone through and edited any of my uh, Bosque stuff. I've just downloaded and captioned it because I'm still finishing up with our events so we could remain on time with our clients. And I have my uh, cache set to purge once a week. So if I haven't opened anything in a while, that's why it's resorting. And you could set that to purge once a year, once a month. So if you're browsing things, you wouldn't have to wait for this sort. It just makes it more efficient on my... I'm using a laptop as my main computer. Mm -hmm. So if you see, all these images have colors, they have ratings. So if I wanna go to one particular color, I can do that, right? All these colors are then, let me, and just to show you also, here's all the caption field information is all there, right? Who took the photos? what its label is, where it was shot, all that information is there. Now, these are the raw files. And this is why I like it, because Photo Mechanic is that fast. Right? Oh, yes. And you could zoom in to check for sharpness. You know, so it's extremely fast. So this is why I will call any shoot. That's why this folder is the call. I will color code them everything in photo mechanic just because of the efficiency. And then here is the Lightroom. So when I open up the Lightroom, and I'll pull up a Lightroom for, um, uh, where did I put that? Oh, sorry, wrong drive. Let me get the Lightroom. Same event. I'm at the overlap point mm -hmm. in the OneDrive. So all those colors, tags, star ratings, because it's photo mechanic is set to match the way we use Lightroom, they transfer over. And then what I do in Lightroom is I've created, and I'll show you how I do this, a template Lightroom catalog because I create a Lightroom catalog for every job. Couple reasons why. One is whenever Lightroom 
does updates. If you have a beefy Lightroom catalog, I've encountered errors, which are then not recoverable. So then you have to totally rebuild, you know, and I, and I just don't want to go through that anymore. And, you know, I, I, I work with Adobe and they're like, yeah, if you're really critical, that's the smartest way to do it. And then you could, if you want, take your favorites and build them into one master Lightroom catalog at any point in time. So these um, smart collection folders, we create as templates as well. And I'll open up a bare template catalog in a second, right? Okay. So we have one, we do a lot of Jewish events. So I have one for wildlife, all those sets of things. So here's all those colors, right? So everything that was tagged in Photo Mechanic matches, pull up Photo Mechanic, exactly into Lightroom. So I'll go back up here and we'll choose just the reds and they're identical, right? All the information is here, all the metadata is here. So you can see how tiny these boxes are mm -hmm. and how challenging it is. It doesn't float out. So we can't really get a nice big perspective on these caption field boxes in Lightroom. So I just find it more convenient to do it in Photo Mechanic and it's just faster. We've tried the workflow in terms of speed. If you don't want or don't care about speed, then just stick with Lightroom. But for me, narrowing it down to get into my favorites, I use Photo Mechanic every day. So you could go to any one of these colors now and you could search exactly where it is. So if I go to a, a big folder here and we pull up an image, I cannot go as fast. See how it's a little jerky? Because mm -hmm. it's having to build the large smart preview behind it, which allows us to edit the image. Because Photo Mechanic is not doing that, it's just looking at the JPEG preview. You immediately have an image all the time. So I just find that really useful for trying to narrow down your favorites. So let me pull up uh, a Bosky catalog just so we can be relevant. Any any questions or thoughts, concerns? Malcolm, did that kind of um, address what you, know, you were thinking about on the captions? Yeah, basically what I what my hierarchy is by year, by date, description, and then going into the files. I probably keep way more. I I probably keep way more. Um, images than what I should. Um, what I was using on the PC was Breeze browser. Sure. And yeah, it, works. it doesn't allow you to enter in all of that metadata. Um, but that's what I was kind of using, what I have been using. And I know that I've got to switch over to Photo Mechanic. And so that's, it's, it's interesting just seeing how the different um, hierarchies on the um, saving the images is and so but uh, being able to copy and being able to sort it in the color scheme and if I'm not mistaken there is a YouTube video on um, coordinating the photo mechanic with Lightroom and how to pull that in. So. There is. And there's also, uh, they have a great resource in their YouTube page that talks about getting in deep with metadata, um, what you can use it for, how to use Photo Mechanic to browse anything and everything, sort it, email, um, move things to Dropbox. It's, it's much more user-friendly that way than Lightroom is, you could tether into it. I mean, there's so many things that are much simpler with Photo Mechanic than there are with Lightroom, you know? So here you can see everything, all my pics, stars, colors, 
all transfer over, you know, so everything works. But you can see it takes it a second, but even just clicking slow, yeah. Lightroom has to, oh, wait, wait, pop, build it, you know? Yeah. But again, that's because it allows us to do all the heavy adjusting with all the editing we want over here. Right. All the information is here in the, like I said before, your ratings, your caption, your other metadata is still out here. But I find it, if I had to input it into these little fields, and a lot of them aren't sticky, meaning I can't save this. You'd have to save every time with Lightroom an overall template. You know, so it, it would only change that one field and then everything else is the same. You know, so even that's a tad bit easier in Photo Mechanic for that purpose, for being a database, for searching through your photos, right? So it works hand in hand. And then, you know, like, okay, I got 42 files here that are my favorites. Well, these are all I'm gonna hit right now and edit and adjust instead of having to find my way through, you know, this catalog, I brought everything in, but I made my selects in Photo Mechanic. So there's 6,000 files in this catalog, but I narrowed it all down and I just brought everything in instead of just bringing in the calls, right? I brought everything in. So my first pass I use as red, meaning I like everything that's red, right? The, there's something about them that I like. And then when I get to five stars, those are going to be my keepers. You know, and that's, those are the ones that are like, okay, these are what I'm going to narrow down and hone into. But you could use whatever you like. You could use any color you like, use any star rating you like. It just happens to be the way that Dawn and I uh, happen to use it and work with it. Cool. I love your pin tail, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was such a great experience. So beautiful there. So beautiful. Long for the days, you know, the sunrises we we're at, everything. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, they're very, very nice. Yeah, you could go full on your Lightroom by hitting the F key. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the trying to keep the overall workflow simple so we can find stuff. So here's here's all the connected drives that mm -hmm. we have access to. And then I'll show you Backblaze is right here. And it's always running in the background because I just did a big uh, ingest of Bosky and that right. event. It's still got 12,000 files to upload in the background. So then once you're here, it'll show you everything that's going and it's constantly backing up. And then you could go from there right to Backblaze. And if you needed anything, log in here, it shows you all of your computers, oh, where's, uh, there we go. It shows you all the computers I have in Backblaze. So I got one, two, three, four, five computers all backing up to Backblaze. And um, my MacBook Pro has the most hard drives connected up to it, along with this other Mac Pro. So we could go into any one of these, let's see, like uh, this file here, it tells you when it was backed up, how many files are done, that's great. And then if you need a restore, you could just pop over to restore and it asks, how would you like them restored? Hard drives, just a file, you can locate your computer, all that information. You know, it's so you, nice. it's it is. It's really nice. It's peace of mind. It's just running in the background, and it's convenient. So, you, and there is an app for your phone if you wanted to drill down 
and get um, a file on a computer or something that you've uploaded. You know, there's all kinds of things. I just use it basically for the backing up, right? So when I look at my restorers, it's going to pick right now, it's loading this computer and the drives. This interface, if you needed to, you can use it remotely on your phone if you're looking to either upload something from your phone or download. And it, it takes a second because I have so many hard drives and so much data connected to it that it's got to, you know, cache them all before I can start drilling into the drives, right? But it's, it's just peace of mind and it's worked. I've never had it not work. And we've been using it for years. So that's, that's, that's about it. Unless you guys want to chat about anything else. Just I mean, this was something. huge for me because I'm sort of new to all this. So sure. Yeah. And I with digital, you get runaway data, right? And the cameras shoot more frames. Right. Right. So um, my, my cataloging system. So I use Luminar mostly um, for my stuff. Sorry, yeah, they started creating catalogs, here. right? <laughs> yeah, they have. So um, yeah. I'm going through that. But what's nice about uh, what you're showing us is that I wouldn't have to be locked into any one um, vendor, if you will. So, uh, you know, I could move it over to either or once I get, you know, more acclimated to Lightroom if I decide to go in that direction. Yeah, what, whatever you do. And um, you could check with Photo Mechanic if there's a rating system in Luminar if they have a crossover for that. So you right. can just, That's good. instead yeah. of bringing everything into Luminar, I don't know if it gets bogged down like Lightroom, the more files you get in it. You yeah, know, I don't you, even do it that way. So I'm bad. So I cheat. I go oh, into you just bring Olympus. In. Yeah, I know. I go into, I hook up my card to look at it through Olympus and I only pull out the ones I want to work on. And I, cause I've had issues because I was on um laptop where the memory was a, <laughs> Is an issue so um it was just too much to do it that way so i sort of got into that habit but now that you know i upgraded my computer i should probably be able to do more sure sure chuck well, that brings up that brings up a good question yeah on when you're working on your laptop do you have an external hard drive that you have hooked up to the laptop in the so field or the in the field or, are you speaking in the field or at at my desk in the field yeah in the field um let me check this drive close this because it's on that drive because this was created in the field and then i guess the question also the set next question is are you using a desktop at home or are you no, using I'm just, your laptop as everything? Yeah, the laptop is everything. They've gotten so good that the laptop is is everything. So this uh, this Mac has got um, 64 gigs of RAM in it. So that's that's great. You know, I have a one terabyte hard drive in it. So it's, you know, just as drive. efficient as any... Uh, desktop I've had previously. So I'm going to eject this drive. And this is the drive that I use in the field. So this is a um, SanDisk, rugged. It's basically a flash, flash memory, USB-C, right. two terabyte hard drive, right? And nowadays um, they make these hubs. Your phones are so powerful now that you, so what, here, let me grab this other device and they've gone out of business because of this, but I still use it. Um, Narbox is a direct download. So you can connect and you could put in your SD cards and then there's a port where you could plug in card readers and download right to this. This is one terabyte. And they went out of business because phones have gotten so powerful that you get a hub, just a little hub, and you plug your cable into the hub, then you could plug this hard drive into that hub 
And then you can have a card reader also connected in the hub and your phone is just the bypass as the computer just to tell it to move the data from the card to the hard drive, right? And you could browse right onto the hard drive. And there, again, there's YouTube videos about that now. So these um, little direct download devices are pretty much all out of business, you know, it, and this was a nice rugged one. So I still use this at events it, in Bosky. I pop a card in there, it downloads mm -hmm. it, but they don't, they, they don't make them anymore. So, and then once I'm at home, I have a dock, a one wire connected dock that allows for all of these hard drives to be connected to it. And when I was speaking earlier, I always have access to, because I we use Lightroom, Don and I in our workflow, a Lightroom template catalog. I have that on Dropbox. I have it on every one of our hard drives. I have it on all of our computers. Oh, wait, I'm not sharing my screen. Uh, share screen. Sorry about that. Here you go. So here is this template catalog. So it's just mm -hmm. basically a blank catalog with one file in it where I've created our uh, develop preset in all of our smart catalogs, smart collection catalogs that boom, whenever we come in from a job, I open up the um, template catalog, rename it with whatever job I'm working on. And it's being this slow just because I'm I'm connected to Zoom. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything pops right open. Um, and then this template catalog we use for a new job for every assignment and every job, everything I shoot. Because again, it, it's very fast and efficient. And then I'm not panicking if one catalog gets corrupted. Here we go. It's opening it up. Especially for what you do. Well, just anything. I, I would feel terrible. You know, I have uh, older Aperture catalogs from 2007 Apple's program before Lightroom mm -hmm. uh, from our trips to Africa in 2007 that are are useless, right? Because it, it, it didn't reference. Everything was embedded into it. Now, right. because we keep this other file structure, what I mean by that is on any drive, it's the same, go by the year, and then you can find whatever you're looking for. And then nested in that would be the RAWs, the call, the exported JPEGs, all those things are in there. So I could go back to that. But the actual Aperture catalogs, and you couldn't do individual catalogs like this, are just done. They're dead. So from 2007 to like 2000, when we switched to Lightroom, um, 13, you know, that stuff is basically useful. I mean, useless. So now I'd have to recreate them in Lightroom catalogs. That's so, a lot of time. So, oh. so here we have the template catalog. I have smart collections. And within this, when I bring things in, Again, it's the same type of ingest. I already have don't import duplicates, build smart previews, embed that in a sidecar file right next to it. And then I have my 2022 develop preset, which we've created. So that's why I have to have a file in here because that develop preset is going to, we pull texture down to start with so things don't look over sharpened and it applies uh, a camera profile because with the Lightroom preferences, you can assign a specific color profile for each camera body so that if we're importing from different cameras, once they get into Lightroom, the color all looks the same because every camera, at least in the Canon lineup or if we're shooting with somebody who's a Nikon, the uh, color science of each image sensor for that specific camera brand is slightly different. 
So when you want to start mixing them all in together and then uh, editing them, we want them to all look the same as they come in, in terms of the color, the picture style. So they're, these are all camera standard, you know, little less on the texture. Um, sharpening is up a little bit. Chromatic abrasion is turned off. And that's just our initial develop, right? And so every picture comes in, will have the same tone and mm -hmm. look before you start editing them. So that's just useful to have, at least it is for us. Again, I'm not saying what we do is written in stone is the right way. So just take it for what it's worth. And I, I hope you find something that's useful for you. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's interesting because I've always wondered on some of the images, you know, like like there at the Bosque, I was using two different camera bodies, right? Taking the same image with roughly because there's the zooms, roughly the same amount of zoom on it with the same color settings, and why there's a little bit of a shade difference. Yep, there is. There is. That's because each camera, not necessarily a difference in brand, but okay, you've got, uh, you know, your Olympus, what do you have, like an OM-1 and then uh, OM-1 Mark II, right? Yep. Something like that. <laughs> there is difference in the image sensors. So you can use when you're editing Lightroom to level that playing field. So what you have to do is you have to process just the color look of each image to see where it is you like that picture style or the color. And then you could tell Lightroom, okay, this particular camera, when you bring it in, I want you to be standard. This other camera, because it might be a little bit more saturated, a little bit more colorful, you might tell that one it needs to be neutral so that when you start looking at them, they're as close as possible to looking the same. You're never going to match them a hundred percent, but you'll get them much closer in the ballpark. That makes and sense. I, I just find that easier as a starting point moving forward. So, you know, in this, uh, in that one catalog, I had R5, 1DX Mark three, and an R3. And they're all a little bit different. And so that's why I put the camera in the serial number and then I tell it what color profile or picture style or whatever you want to call it is applied to that camera, that serial number when you bring it in. So, you know, we do that because if we have someone photographing with us with an older camera or they're using an icon, when they come into Lightroom, they all start to look very similar for your starting point. You know, but by nature, Canons are more punchy in the reds and warm tones. Nikons are more green and magenta. And, you know, if you want to lift and stamp a certain recipe yeah. as close as possible, you need to get them as neutral or as in alignment as possible when you bring them in. Cool. Any... Very cool. Okay. Can I just check in? I'm not sure. Yeah. Hey, hear... Chuck. We can hear you. I... You've been quiet. Well, I was late getting in, and and I'm kind of watching this. Thank you, Bob. Just over my iPhone because for some reason I couldn't bring it up on my desktop for the larger screen. So I'm really squinting. But thank you for the information. Um, do you have any idea why this didn't come up on? on my desktop? Uh, maybe because I started late and I had some technical issues with my computer, but I recorded it. So I will oh. post it um, on YouTube and then share the link in the group. Yeah, I like I'm looking at the desktop and it's saying the host has another meeting in progress. So it's just for some reason, oh. I, I was quickly able to get on I don't yeah, know. I've yeah, sometimes it, it does that. Okay. I don't know why. Anyways. Yeah. 
I've seen that before too. Yeah, I've had that happen before as well. Okay, well, good information. I'd heard of photo mechanic before, but you've encouraged me to look at it harder now. So and I, they give I, you trial I, versions, so oh, yeah. it, you can play with it, you know, and see if it's something that agrees with you or not, and then go sure. from there. Sure. Thank you. And I think I better give Backblaze a, a harder look too. I use a now system and I like I use a scan disk, a similar uh, hard drive in the field to, to download my images. And then I, I've got it just sitting here ready to download onto the, the now system and back up. But sure. I think I should be using the Backblaze as well. So, um, Backblaze will do a NAS. It, it's just a little bit more tricky on how to get it pointed at it, but they'll chat with you and get you hooked up. Okay, good. And that way there, again, you know, if anything happens to your NAS, you're, you're backed up. Yeah. Good. Cool. Well, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. I uh, keep sharing. I love seeing the photographs in the group. And like I said, I will post this tomorrow. So if you want to go back through and look at anything, feel free. And if you have any further questions, just, just drop them in the group. Thank Thanks, you very Bob. much. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I heard, I heard we lucked out with weather. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to a couple of people afterwards and, you know, they, they, they need the rain, but when you're there, you know, you don't want to spend a, a, a day or two in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it came through pretty hard, but pretty fast. So the one day the birds just sat around, didn't do anything. And so the next day they were all out feeding. I'm sure. I'm sure when it, that kind of, rain and stuff it gets them excited so well great well thank you thanks everybody take care be take well care. thank you very much happy thank holidays. you yes happy holidays bye-bye bye-bye